your host, Susan Regan. Hello, I'm Susan Patricelli Regan, and I am your host for Connecticut Valley Views. My guests today are from the Creck Greater Hartford Academy of the Arts Half Day Program. And I want to tell you that CREC is an acronym for the Capital Region Education Council. Now, since 1966, CREC has been working with and for its member districts and has developed a wide array of cost-effective and high-quality programs and services to meet the educational needs of children and adults in the Greater Hartford area. The Greater Hartford Academy of the Arts is a half-day program in high school program with an intense focus on the fine arts. And students study with professional artists and instructors in chosen art fields. So now I would like to present my guests, Natasha Miles. Hello. And she is the Visual Arts Department head. What a delight to have you here today. Thank you so much for having us. And Kim Stroud, and she is the Academy Director. Thank you for having us. So I think this is going to be a very interesting interview and I think very informative to our viewers. So uh, Kim and Nastasha, we'll, we'll start out with you, Kim. Background, career background, how you became involved, how long you've been here. Um, I'm not quite sure this is either my 27th or 28th year, depending on how you count it. I've been here a long time. I started as dance department chair, um, then went to the director of the arts, then the assistant director, and now the director of the school. My background is dance. I am originally from New York City. I attended the LaGuardia School of, of the Arts. Mm -hmm. I went to uh, SUNY Purchase as a dance major. Mm -hmm. I then um, had a career in New York. I danced with the Metropolitan Opera Ballet. I danced with the Martha Graham Company, as well as doing some Broadway work and other things. Mm -hmm. um, my, what brought me to Connecticut was a job with Hartford Ballet and the University of Hartford. Taught there for a while and then discovered this high school. Yes. Well, what a wonderful thing. So what, approximately what year did you come here? You said you've been here around 20? Came to Connecticut? Uh, when you joined here. So you've been here 20 some 90, years. 19 years. Three, I okay. think it was, yeah. So this has been a very rewarding experience for you. Absolutely. The, this, is, this is my tribe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, what would you say is, is there, what, your route to coming here Earlier than what you were doing in New York, was there anybody who inspired you to get into the dance uh, thing? I mean, was this always a five-year-old little girl, I always want to be a dancer? No. Interestingly oh, okay. enough, uh, I feel like I have come full circle being here because I was one of those young people who did not have the opportunity to study the art form. I see. I always loved to sing and dance, mm -hmm. um, but I never had the opportunity or the um, ability to study. Mm. And then I discovered the LaGuardia High School mm -hmm. and got the opportunity to work with some amazing people and to gain those technical and artistic skills that allowed me to then get into a college dance program. Mm -hmm. Fast forward, here I am, and I'm trying so hard to do that exact thing for the students of Greater Hartford. Well, that's what I was going to say. See, <laughs> the whole thing goes full circle. You got that opportunity in a place that allowed you to grow and flower and expand yes. and everything, and this is what you've established here. Yes. So that's very exciting. That, that is the most rewarding thing, I think, that when you, you are giving and, and you're actually you're receiving because Absolutely. you can see what you can do for other people. Absolutely. I know, I know viscerally what it feels yes. like. Yes. And um, so I try to make that, that opportunity for, for the students here. Mm. Just as a, an interesting segment, I think if we've got What's the percentage between boys and girls in the program? We are predominantly female right now. I'd okay. say we're conservatively 60-40 okay. heavy with female. Okay. Yeah. All right. And it, uh, it really does depart, uh, depend on which department, which art form. Sure. Some sure. are more male heavy, some yes. are more female heavy. Yes. Interesting. Well, Natasha, mm -hmm. tell us about your career path. Well. Getting here to being visual arts department head, I actually started as a guaranteed sub for the Capital Region Education mm -hmm. Council and hopped around. At the time, CREC had about 12 programs and schools in the district, and I would hopped around to a couple different ones and landed here for a week of okay. subbing. Okay. And a position opened up that following January, and here I am 19, almost 20 years later. Wow. 
So you two are veterans, <laughs> are veterans of this yes. program. Absolutely. Yes. But, Absolutely. Um, and Natasha as well attended a performing arts school. I did. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, to, yeah, to start from the beginning. Well, yeah. <laughs> my parents were extremely supportive. Where, where they worked. Where? So I grew up in Florida. In Florida, okay. I grew up in West Palm, and I, you know, I took dance classes. I took theater classes. I had the opportunity to try a lot of different things, mm -hmm. but when an arts magnet middle and high school came mm -hmm. about, mm -hmm. that's where I was able to completely just grow. Mm -hmm. um, I attended from 7th through 12th grade mm -hmm. to the Dreyfus School of the Arts, mm -hmm. and from there was encouraged to continue my passion mm -hmm. for being an artist. Mm -hmm. So I attended then the University of Hartford Arts School. That's yeah. what brought me to Connecticut. What medium do you like to work in the most? I'm predominantly a painter, printmaker, and one-of-a-kind book designer. So my work is derived from experience, from you know expression, and from abstract, mm -hmm. you know, Resource. When you talk book designer, is that mm -hmm. just cover or interior? The entire, the, the entire, entire book. Thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Very interesting. And when did you move up from Florida? 97. In 97. Mm -hmm. And what brought you to Connecticut? Was it specifically? University of Hartford. It was that? that it, was what, I came what here to, to attend and study painting and printmaking and art history. And I continued to keep connection mm -hmm. with West Palm mm -hmm. every summer. Mm -hmm. I was part of the Armory Arts Center's growing summer arts program. Yes, yes. So that's where I started teaching. Yes. And being able to, you know, navigate all different skill levels and interests, but in a rigorous summer program. Yes. That was able to translate here. Yeah. Do you see has there been an expansion of the expression in the arts? In other words, what I'm saying is is that one might say that it's included, could be architecture, could be painting. Mm -hmm. Could be illustration, mm -hmm. could be comic book illustration, mm -hmm. could be uh, could be dance, could mm -hmm. be. Do there's an allowance? I would say that if there was some other, I don't know if I want to call it medium or not, mm -hmm. but some other thing that because so many things move so fast these mm -hmm. days. Yes, absolutely. And new ideas come up about whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. I mean, one might even say there could be a class on graffiti. I'm, I'm just oh. making something. We have, we have that. that. Well, there you go. Yeah, we totally have that. So we look at our curriculum all the time. Okay. It is evolving to the point where there will always be core fundamentals and foundations that mm -hmm. are in place. Mm -hmm. It's important to have observational drawing skills. It's important to understand color theory. It's important to really be able to experience how to create something in the round, mm -hmm. but also to learn how to be a critical thinker mm -hmm. and how to you know take a risk step back look at what yes. you did see why it didn't work yes. and then go back into it and try again mm. right so we acknowledge all of those components but as far as the innovation and, and connecting with the ever-changing technology that's happening in the world, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. So this year, we've increased our digital classes. There's an animation class as okay. well. Um, we have more students who are working either personally on their own tablets or devices to create, and we want to embrace that, but mm -hmm. also be able to give them more tools for mm -hmm. their personal style and experience that they're doing outside of what we're doing in our class. Well, we yes. also do that yeah. across the art forms, not yes. just, not yes. just visual. in visual arts. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So we're working more in technology with music, with dance, with mm -hmm. theater, um, and um, one of the positive outcomes of COVID is mm. that we really had to mm -hmm. get into mm -hmm. how do you perform Absolutely. digitally? Yes. How do you perform on, rec on recording? Yes. Um, so we, we've now incorporated some of that into the curriculum. Mm -hmm. Our charge is college entrance, so we're also in, um, in communication with college programs on a regular basis. What are you looking for in your new incoming mm -hmm. students? And we make those oh, tweaks. Oh, that's, that's interesting. Yes, yes, so we do make those tweaks to yeah. our curriculum yeah. as well yeah. as those things change, as those requirements mm -hmm. and what they're looking for changes. That's great anticipation because you're right, because you could be intensely studying something here mm -hmm. and then find out it has no application to the college you were mm -hmm. hoping to go to because they're more into fill in the blank. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Well, during this COVID period, and I think at any time in people's progress, we talk about um, depression. Uh, we talk about, um, I think, a lot of suicide um, issues, um, people having over-medicating, self-medicating, and so forth. But the arts 
And this creative thing is a natural homeopathic uh, solution in itself. Because when you can express yourself otherwise, even if it's a sad painting, mm -hmm. at least it's in a more constructive way. Yes. And it gets people, to, and I think it's important between parents and children too. Yes. If the parents are very involved. Do you have lots of parents, um, are they involved? Are they, do you find that parents like to be involved in what's going on with the curriculum? Yes That's a not? hard question to answer, okay. only because the, the short answer is yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. The longer answer is um, we, we have many advantages that happen because we're a, a very widespread interdistrict school. Mm -hmm. But we also have some challenges that are presented by being, being a very widespread yes. interdistrict school. We have students from over 40 different towns and high schools coming to us every day. Wow. Um, and so when you ask me about that, I mean, you know, would the parent from Meriden yes. like to come here and be involved? Absolutely. And sometimes we do some things uh, virtually that can involve more parents, mm. but it, sometimes it's 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 a, it's a family challenge to make that happen. If yes. you have you know three little kids at right. home right. and dinner has to get on the table, right. and how do you get to Hartford and back? You know, so can you do Zoom things with parents. We do do okay. Zoom things with parents, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the an so the answer is more complicated, mm. but yeah. are they avid? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Good. Good. Yeah, Absolutely. that that's critical these these days too that the parents are involved. Yes, they are. I think so. Well, um, the history of the establishment, and Kim, I'm going to direct this question to you um, of the Crack Learning Corridor campus and its group. Does it include any special education students? So Absolutely. Students that, okay. Yes. So what would you say would be the proportion of special education mm -hmm. students? I think we're about 13 to 14 percent special okay. education students. Okay. Um, an interesting phenomena, if you will, for us is that um, many of the things that challenge students in their normal uh, high school requirements mm -hmm. don't fit, don't present themselves with what yeah, we do. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, because we, because their creative, their creativity is not defined right. by X and Y. It is defined by them. Yes. And we also have the luxury, and I, I do appreciate that it's a luxury to tailor, um, to tailor curriculum to mm -hmm. students mm -hmm. when need be, mm -hmm. um, because they don't have to pass. Yes. You know, geometry yes, in order yes, to graduate. Yes. It's not like that. So, you know, if this if this student who has autism really wants to do um, you know, jazz music right. and that's their thing, right, right. we can tailor to yeah. that student. Well, well see and what's good about this is is that they are not set aside and segmented and no, so far you tailor no. to them, but they are involved with the regular students Absolutely. on an ongoing basis. And Absolutely. I and, and we have done autism interviews before mm -hmm. and they said one of the most important things is to make sure that they are have connection with your normal segment population attending school. This is very important in order to be able for them to transition at some point, hopefully. Right, right. And that wasn't a random statement. We yes. actually have had um, musicians, gifted musicians. Wow. Well, yeah, yes, yes, particularly exactly. on the autistic spectrum. Exactly. Yes, exactly. they are. Very, they can be very focused. Yes. Yes, okay. very focused. Um, and I, I want to ask Natasha, um, the Academy of the Heart State half-day program. Give us a sense of how that works and, mm -hmm. you know, how many students you have, how many right. do you see, and what is your responsibility as you work with them? So, you know, this campus is bustling around 12, 25, 12, 30. Mm -hmm. You have shuttle buses coming from all of our districts. Mm -hmm. uh, at one o'clock, all studio classes commence for all six of our disciplines. Mm -hmm. So you have students in visual arts, dance, theater, musical theater, technical music, theater. Techn technical <laughs> theater. <laughs> right? It's technical theater like theater uh, design uh, and production. So it's behind the scenes. It, it's all the it's support work for mm -hmm. theater okay. uh, in, in, um, in creativity and in construction. So mm -hmm. they do costume design and construction. They do mm -hmm. scenic design and construction. They do lighting design and implementation. They do mm -hmm. stage management. Wow. Yeah. That's and the very, students. That's really exciting. That's almost like a trade school. Ab absolutely, absolutely. In that sense it I is. Mean, and those students yeah. actually work. Mm -hmm. They do. They, they that's do. really exciting. That's like being 
um, you know, kind of having an opportunity to work before you work. And Absolutely. That's right. And that's you can say, if you had any experience, yes, I did this. I was responsible you know, <laughs> yep, for whatever. Absolutely. Yeah. No, that's, that's fantastic. Yeah. We are pre-professional, yeah. you know, arts. So principal. give us a sense of your, your week, your schedule. How does that work? How many <laughs> students do you see? And so the visual arts department currently has about 80 students. Okay. I have six faculty, and we are looking to hire one more. Okay. Um, they have anywhere from two to three studio classes in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. uh, the majority of those classes are those core fundamentals. So they are learning anything from watercolor mm -hmm. to three-dimensional sculpture to illustration and animation, mm -hmm. right? They also have an opportunity, and this is encouraged for all disciplines, mm -hmm. to take a course outside of their major. It is so important. Oh. It is so important that aspiring artists understand how others create. Yes especially with our mission and our you know, true focus in our program by taking risks, embracing failure, and celebrating difference. Mm -hmm. So by doing that and having that as part of their everyday you know, experience here in our program, it is significant to their growth. Well, I, I'd just like to say that we've had a very nice coalition this past year. Um, mm -hmm. uh, my husband and I, uh, I had established a foundation in memory of my mother and it's the Sylvia Davis Patricelli Fine Arts Scholarship. And we were very happy to be part of your spring program and presenting that to some of the winners. So um, I think we feel a special bond with you folks. Uh, yeah. As I said earlier, I'm very supportive of you people, what you do, how professional you are. But at the same time, there's a, a very warm feeling about this school. Yes. As professional, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't have a, a clinical feel to it. It's very warm and, and encouraging and and just well done, well done. So we're, we just want to tell you, we're, we're delighted Thank and we're looking you. forward to next year's presentation and winners. Well, one of the things I think Crick did in its wisdom mm -hmm. is to um, staff this school with professional artists as opposed to professional educators. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so there is a feeling and a culture of a master and apprentice as opposed to yes. teacher and student. Yes. So in that sense, we all work together. Mm -hmm. we're, we're all working together. Mm -hmm. And we as the artists acknowledge that we learn things from the students mm -hmm. as well as they learning from us. Mm -hmm. So it, I, I think that's the feeling that you're, mm -hmm. that you're sensing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's, um, it, it's a very successful equation. And uh, so keep up the good work in that department. Now, uh, Kim, you talked a little bit about the well, not so much the diversity of the students, but I think you said 40 some odd towns you draw from. Yes. And, and give us a sense of the diversity of students. I, um, so um, first of all, we are an interdistrict magnet. Um, we draw students from all of the towns of the greater Hartford area and beyond. Uh, it, students are allowed to come from anywhere here if they can get mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. um, right now, our racial demographic mm -hmm. is roughly 45% Caucasian mm -hmm. and about 30% Hispanic and about 25% um, African American, okay. um, black. So those are rough numbers, yes. but that's about our breakdown. Okay. And then there's you know, a smattering of other things in yeah. there, too. It, and has that remained fairly consistent, those the, um, breakdowns? It's fairly consistent. You know, mm -hmm. The numbers go this way or that way mm -hmm. within a year, but roughly mm -hmm. that's, that's average. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, now, either, either one of you, happy to have you respond to this, because this is very important for parents who might be considering doing how does it work? Is mm -hmm. it drawing names? Is it by number? You have to have a certain uh, academic record to apply. How does that all work? Let's just say a parent was considering doing it. What, what's the first step they need to do? Well, I'll start. Okay. Um, our entrance is by lottery. Okay. And the lottery is done at the State Department of Education, not here. Okay. Um, their mission is to give as many students from as many um, backgrounds in Connecticut an opportunity to be in a magnet school. So I don't exactly know what algorithms they use, but they make sure that all towns are represented in some mm -hmm. way, that different races are represented in some way. Um, and so therefore, uh, we wait, as mm -hmm. the parents do, to mm -hmm. see who our new students will be. Right. We have no say in that. 
Um, what, I do tell, what I do tell parents when they come to our open houses to get information about whether or not they wish to apply mm -hmm. here um, is that, you know, make sure that whatever schools you apply to, you really want your child to go to because in their application at the State Department of Education, mm -hmm. they have the opportunity to apply for up to five schools. Okay. But it's a one offer lottery. Okay. So if you get offered a spot in school number five, that's it. You're done. Okay. You don't even get a chance at school number one. Okay. So if you only want your child to go to one of yeah, those right, schools, right. then only put one name on that lottery, not I five. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because it's a one offer lottery. Okay. So that much I do know about it. Um, as I said, we have no say in who is selected through the lottery to have a slot in our school, though I think parents have, we have been very fortunate and then parents have, have been very um, considerate in what we do, how we do it, mm -hmm. and the demand of what we do. It's an extended day. Students mm -hmm. don't have study halls. They don't get to be in clubs at their home schools. Right. You know, they are committing to three, more than three hours a day of arts here. Right, right. So I think that, you know, we try very hard to inform parents so that when they put the, our name on that application, they are, they're making an informed decision of mm. what that commitment is. Mm. Therefore, we've been very fortunate in having students generally mm -hmm. who really want to be here, mm -hmm. who really have that desire and that passion to study intensively in an art form. Mm. And our students do major in an art form. Mm -hmm. It's not like you get to pick and choose. Mm -hmm. You have a comprehensive curriculum within that art form in preparation to be the most viable student for college programs when your time comes to apply for college. Mm -hmm. um, we do have students who, for whom you know, they decide it's not the right place. Yes. And one of the things I say to parents. Is there a dropout percentage? There, there generally yeah. is, especially right at the start of the new year. Right, right. Um, and, but I say to parents in exit interviews, well, isn't it great that you found that out now rather yeah, than at $75,000 a year? Right, right. <laughs> right you know, because there is no tuition cost no, that's to true. come here. No, that's there is no, this is a public high school, there's no tuition cost. There's no tuition, okay. No tuition of, cost for parents. Okay, so let's just say I'm a parent and I mm -hmm. have a student and I, I would like to apply here mm -hmm. and I apply to the certain one, whatever it may be. And then the student gets accepted. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's no cost at all, just as in that's a public right. school. Right. That's right. All right. So they attend here. Now, how do, where do the transportation costs? Who, who's covering it? Because that's I don't know all what the part, like any other public school. Okay. That's all part of That the comes state. from the town that they yep. come from. Yep. yep. Okay. All right. No so, cost to parents. Okay. Now, the, do you have, uh, as a side question, do you have a sports program? Or is there no, no, no athletics? So this no. is the intensity, particularly mm -hmm. in your half day program. That's right. That's, intensity that's right. Our students, if they're doing, what would be considered extracurricular. They're hanging exhibits, they're rehearsing okay. for shows. Mm -hmm. I mean, th this is their, this right. is it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right, now what's, what strikes me is because the parents are very focused on perhaps getting the child in, the child wants to attend, they're very passionate about what they're doing. We know that in public schools and, and many of our schools and many problems are happening these days with young people. Um, you know, there, there's truancy, there's mm -hmm. not preparation for class, I didn't get my home, the dog ate my homework, um, you know, they don't want to take the test, um, there's back talk to teachers and stuff. Mm -hmm. Do you ever find, or are they so involved in what they want to do that you don't have problems here? Mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm asking a kind of a behind the curtains <laughs> thing, but it, it, because this is important, because yes. Yes. In, in normal schools, things happen, and God forbid, mm -hmm gun shootings and yes. you know yes. Yes. but it, it feels the culture here does not it doesn't <laughs> that, is, that, that is not a, that is not our culture however yes. i also don't live in um a fantasy world yes <laughs> um, these are teenagers and yes. they do come from all over mm -hmm. so we have a great culture here it is very mm -hmm. accepting it is very warm um, and fortunately we have small classrooms so students are known they know their teachers, yeah. their teachers know them. Yeah. I think all of this lends, and they do have a passion for what they do here. Yeah. It's so very industrious all, and constructive. Exactly, mm -hmm. so I think that all lends itself to a, a wonderful culture for a school. Nonetheless, you know, um, we, 
on occasion do have issues that we have to deal yes, with. Fortunately, it's on occasion. Yes. It, it is not our norm. I, yes. I think that's why a lot of our faculty stay for so long. That's great. Um, that's wonderful. Because they don't it's have to deal healthy. with those things on a regular basis. But we, we've had occasion where Absolutely. we've had to Yeah, deal well, you've with had things. to deal with things. So yeah, yeah, particularly, I'm sure, with drugs and other things that get, get involved. And they are whatever. teenagers. But, right. uh, they, they are teenagers, <laughs> yes. Um, well, well, that's uh, great. Now, what about revenue stream as far as uh, the school itself? So obviously, since mm -hmm. it's no cost to the family, um, so, uh, how, does your, how does that work? Is it donations? Mm, how well, does, yes, and yes. By the Again, state. That's, that's a little complicated. That's a little more complicated than a regular public high school, though we are a public high school. So that means we do get state funding for, uh, for our program, for our operations, for our transportation. We do get state funding like other schools do. However, much of our curriculum is maybe not funded in the same way that yes. math, science, social studies, yes. and you know, language arts would be. And so we do a lot of fundraising. Mm -hmm. we, do, uh, we do a lot of um, networking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do you have regular donors who? Uh, we have regular donors. So we have some lovely people who support us and have been supporting us on a regular mm -hmm. basis mm -hmm. um, because they believe in what we do. Is there an endowment thing? We do have an endowment. Okay. Um, okay. It's still in its infancy. Okay. Um, so it's not necessarily generating the, the amount of money that we would yes. hope that it, we hope it will at some point, but we do have an endowment mm -hmm. that was started by a parent by a parents group mm -hmm. many years ago, mm -hmm. and so it's very slowly, very very slowly mm -hmm. growing. Yes, but it is growing. Yeah, and um, and we do have some donors who um, who support us greatly. So, for instance, you know when we want to take we're, we're an interdistrict magnet. We believe in equity across our students so mm -hmm. if we say we're taking the senior class to the high school dance festival yes. in philadelphia right. we are taking the senior class yeah. that's so cool. if we have mm -hmm. to call you and say i need a thousand dollars because this student and this student can't afford yeah. to pay for it we have people who will help us great. do that that's great well um, this has been a very exciting i think i th <laughs> particularly to have the two of you because i think a lot of people know of this particular opportunity for schooling but don't know the intricacies of it and how it works so this has been very exciting to have both of you on today thank you. I'm very thank appreciative you. of your time congratulations on superb jump you get gold stars all across the <laughs> thank you. remember when people used to put gold stars on um, I still provide stickers yes. <laughs> you be yeah. surprised okay. what a teenager in all right <laughs> and I do want to provide uh, the website to our viewers in case you'd like to follow along uh, or contact them and it would be G H a a h d dot c r e c schools dot org. Again, I'd like to thank you. I'm Susan Patricelli Regan. I am your host for Connecticut Valley Views. It's been a delight to be here today with my guests. Please watch our show on ctvalleyviews.com. Thank you.